Hi everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. I want to thank you for tuning into my channel today. Today I want us to go on a little imaginary journey, if you will. I want you to imagine that you are standing in a field looking up at the night sky in the year 6000 BC. And as you look towards the constellation Cygnus, you notice there is a new star in the sky, a star that you've never noticed before. And slowly, this star is brightening. Over the next several nights and several weeks, the star slowly grows in its uh, brightness to become the brightest star in the night sky. And then just as suddenly as it appeared, it begins to dim and eventually disappear. What you would have been witnessing was not the birth of a new star, but rather the death of a very old star, a star that was some 20 times more massive than our sun. Today, when we look at that same region, we can see the remnants of the death of that star in the Veil Nebula. Today, we're going to look at one part of that incredible complex of nebulosity that we know as the veil, we're going to look at the Western Veil, NGC 6960. Stick around. I want to talk to you not only about the incredible science behind the creation of this, this object, but I also then want to just stop and look at the incredible beauty of this object. Stick around. Okay, let me take just a moment here and get you oriented in the night sky for how to find the um, Veil Nebula. We're looking here towards the east and specifically in towards the constellation Cygnus. Now, I've spent a lot of time in this region uh, throughout the spring. I've already imaged um, the area over here around um, the Cygnus star cloud over in this region. Uh, I've spent a little bit of time over on the Dumbbell Nebula, um, also um, uh, all through this area, actually. And you can see as I kind of zoom in, look at all the green boxes. This is all areas of nebulosity and um, so this is a very, very crowded area of the sky. The way you can find it, of course, is here's Vega, Deneb, and Altair, three pretty bright stars that form this sort of triangle. Once you find that, if you find the star Deneb, you can just simply move to the right. You'll find uh, Seder right here, moved uh, south of, you know, actually, kind of uh, south and east, um, towards uh, this star here, which is Aljana. And then right between it and the next star down, just to the right, you're going to find the Veil Nebula. If I begin to zoom in, you will see uh, the Veil begin to develop. Now you'll notice there's really three main sections of this, we'll say. This is the East Veil Nebula. This is the Western Veil Nebula. Now, this is what I've focused on in the picture that I'm going to show you here in a little bit. This area in here is known as uh, Pickering's Triangle. It's rather interesting. That was discovered in, I believe it was 1904, by Wilhelmina Fleming. And instead of being named Fleming's Triangle, it was named after uh, Pickering, who was the director of the observatory where she worked. But anyways, uh, I'll give you kind of a, a little history lesson here. But this is the area we're looking at. Let me show you real quick one of the difficulties of imaging in this area. This is a picture. This is not my picture. I looked this up on Astro Ben. This is taken by a guy named Pierre G. And here he's got this whole area. This is often referred to as the Cygnus Loop. Here you'll see this is the Western Veil, the Eastern Veil. Over here is Pickering's Triangle. But notice the massive amount of stars in this area. Now, that makes it rather difficult to image. And what I did, let me show you my um, the image that I produced here. This is the image um, that we're going to look at more detailed in a few moments. This is my image. And you'll notice something that I've done. I have reduced the number of stars in the picture a little bit. I've kind of used some processing techniques to reduce the number of stars 
in order to enhance the nebulosity. And so here, this is the, the Western Veil Nebula. We'll come back to this picture in just a few moments and look at it in more detail. But first, I want to show you something. Notice how this sort of forms. The reason it's called the Cygnus Loop is it sort of forms this loop. Let me take just a couple of moments to explain to you how this uh, nebula was formed. This was all formed from the same supernova. So let me take just a moment and kind of explain how it was uh, created. Okay, now that we have a little bit of an understanding of where this object is located in the night sky, let me talk to you a little bit about how it was formed. Now, as I said a moment ago, this was created from a star that was some 20 times more massive than our sun. And what happens to stars of that size is as they run out of their main fuel, they collapse very suddenly uh, inward. And that collapse sends out a shock wave. And so if you imagine as that collapses down, a shock wave goes out and creates a void in the space around the star, okay? Pushes out all of that intergalactic gas and, and material, pushes it away and creates this great void out around now this super dense star. Now, it continues to burn for a while. It continues to go through its lifestyle or life cycle and uh, continue to burn as a white dwarf. But when it reaches the end of its fuel, it explodes. It goes supernova. When it does that, it throws all of that material outward. Now, what happens is as that material comes to the edge of that void, it begins to interact. That's what we see when we look at the Veil Nebula. What we're seeing is that gas that has been expelled from this star that exploded interacting with the edges of that void and running in to the intergalactic material around it. And that's what creates this incredibly beautiful image. In fact, what's amazing is, to me, is that out of the death of this star, comes one of the most beautiful objects in the night sky. Let's take a look a little bit care more closely at just the beauty of this particular object. Okay, let's look at the picture now. That's what I really want to show you. And I hope you've stuck around long enough. If you're listening to this, obviously you have. This is the Western Veil Nebula. The very bright star here at the center is uh, 52 Cygni. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. Uh, down here, you see some of the gas. If we were to move up in this section, if we had a wider picture. This would be uh, Pickering's... Um, um, uh, triangle up in this region, but this is all the um, Western Veil, often referred to as the Witch's Broom Nebula, and sometimes as the Finger of God Nebula. And you can kind of see why both of those um, monikers have kind of held. This is uh, located, the actual nebula is about 2,400 light years away from Earth. It was first observed in 1784 by William Herschel, um, and he described it as an extended um, uh, nebula. He said he called it a branching nebulosity uh, that divides into several streams. And um, which what he was seeing obviously was this strand effect that you see uh, in this nebula, which I think is the most interesting and beautiful part of it. It's actually formed because we're sort of looking at the nebula edge on and uh, we're seeing right there at the edge of where this um, uh a gas that was expelled in the supernova is beginning to interact with this um, um, coming to the edge of that void and interacting with the interstellar material, um, the, the intergalactic material that's that's out here around it. So rather interesting. Now, 52 Cygni, the star here, looks like it's part of this nebula. In fact, when I first looked at this, I, I thought that this star was probably providing the energy or the light. That is incorrect. 52 Cygni is actually only 290 light years away from the Earth 
whereas the nebula is about 2,400 light years away. So that, that just shows you sometimes in astronomy what you first observe and you see. When I looked at this, I would have sworn that that star was probably providing the energy that lit up all of this gas, but it's not. It actually has nothing to do. This, this star is not related at all other than it is happens to set by chance, I guess, in, in line with this nebula, but it makes a beautiful, beautiful uh, backdrop. I, it, I, this is one of the most stunning areas. Again, let me focus in just a little bit. Let me kind of zoom in on this picture and, and show you. Again, I, I love how clear this picture came out. This was taken with a ZWO183MC Pro. I took about eight and a half hours of actual image data with it. Uh, 127 uh, subframes at um, four minutes a piece, which works out to just shy of eight and a half hours. Um, I also then um, used uh, to calibrate the frames. I used um, uh, 20 dark frames, 20 um, flat frames, no, 40 flat frames and 40 dark flat frames, and uh, processed all of that in Astro Pixel processor. And it, in the noise, um, there's hardly any noise at all in this picture. And that's one of the things I love about it. That way you get this beautiful um, uh, stringiness that, that you see in here. And that's the only way I can describe it. It's a very stringy nebula. You can see down in here all of these little individual strands and frames. I, I think that just is a... This is probably my favorite picture. Maybe it's e it's either my first or second favorite picture. I really love the picture I got recently of the Eagle Nebula that I just did a, a video on a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I'm telling you, this one, it, it doesn't get much better than this. This is what keeps you coming back in astrophotography is a picture like this. I'm looking forward here in a couple of weeks. As soon as I can ca get a couple more clear nights, I'm going to go work on the Eastern Veil, and uh, then I'm going to work on Pickering's Triangle. I'm not sure I'm going to do it in those in those order, but I'd like to catch this whole Cygnus loop. And uh, well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor. Click on like and subscribe. And then if you wouldn't mind, share it with your friends. I'm trying to build my subscriber base, trying to get more and more subscribers, and uh, you could help me a lot with that. So again, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, you'll come back uh, next week when we look at uh, something else. All right. Thank you. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.